and convenience are driving the way Canadians are choosing to pay. Just pull out my phone and tap it. Credit or debit? Credit 95% of the time and then debit otherwise. But there's one particular payment option that's steadily declining. Cash. I can't remember the last time I had cash on me. Canada is one of the leading countries that's becoming cashless. According to a recent global payments report, it's projected that by 2025, cash will make up only 3% of all point-of-sale transactions in the country, one of the lowest in the world. With Canadians opting for more contactless forms of payment, it's opened the door for new futuristic shopping experiences. Marie Young is one of the co-founders and chief operating officer of Aisle 24, a cashierless, cashless, small format grocery store in Canada. We met up with her at one of the Toronto locations. We do not accept cash. We have never accepted cash. Marie says Canadians are strapped for time. Instead of lining up at the cashier or going through the process of being cashed out, you self-serve and you cash out and off you go meaning ease and technology are key. The reason why we accept tap and mobile pay is because that's where the consumer market is going. We have people coming into our stores with nothing but their phones or nothing but their watches because that's the trend. So how does it work? You need to be a member to come in. So you register an account, you've got your app, you press the access button, you walk in, Shop as you would any other grocery store or convenience store, and you check out on your own, and you leave, and there's nobody there. With this innovative approach to in-store shopping, Marie says most people are in and out within five minutes. We built this convenience aspect that was totally um, unmanned and driven by technology. The simplicity of new payment technologies are some of the reasons Canadians are choosing plastic over cash. In fact, a report by the Canadian Bankers Association projects that in the next five years, tap-and-go payments will increase by 43%. But what does this shift away from cash say about our cultural and social behaviour? I don't know if we often pause to think how strange it is to just pause in the middle of the street, pay a bill on your phone while monitoring your investments. These are both characteristically modern experiences, but also very peculiar in understanding how this became something that we think is all right to do. Mark Hayward is an associate professor in the Department of Communication and Media Studies at York University. He says part of Canada's success of switching to contactless forms of payments is that we trust the technology. In the case of cashless banking or digital banking, it was about a much larger shift in transforming how we think about our relationship to banks as institutions, the ways that we trust computers and trust digital technology, and the ways that we bring and integrate those into our daily habits. Mark adds the trust Canadians gained with cashless banking includes the early and successful adoption of automated banking machines and electronic transaction systems like Interac. We have a highly centralized, stable banking sector, which means that at a certain point in time, they were able to cooperate to put in place an electronic transaction system, Interac. This meant that Canada was able to make a tremendous amount of advances in this particular area through the 1980s that put it further ahead than the United States or countries in Europe. And that not only changed how we pay for items, but it also changed our relationships with technology and each other. Why is it necessary for me to bolt out of bed at 3.30 in the morning and forward money to my cousin who I just bought something from? Like, it's, a, it's kind of a weird thing, so anyway. Because you can. Because you can, because this is now the new rhythm by which we live with finance. But not everyone's jumping on the cashless bandwagon. We're cash only. Abra Shiner is the owner of The Swan Dive, a proudly cash-only bar in Toronto. Cheers! We've been cash-only since the beginning. We had to start accepting, uh, I guess, like square reader card payments for a while during the pandemic because people were so afraid of cash. But we got rid of that about as quickly as we could. It's really inconvenient. 
Abra says accepting only cash is more convenient for the bar. Because it makes the paperwork easier to do, it's quicker to divide tips between employees. And cash actually saves her money. When people want to use a card to pay with like a, one of those Sirius or Debit or Square systems, that costs the business money. So every time you go to a restaurant and pay with your card, that business is losing money. Starting in October, Canadian businesses have the option to pass on some of those credit card fees to customers as a result of a class action settlement. And what happens if you try to pay with plastic at Swan Dive? We do have this ATM in the back, and that's when people use it is when they walk in without cash on them. Abra adds that even though Canadians are embracing a cashless existence, there's still a lot of businesses that rely on cold, hard cash. The cafe down the street this way, they're still cash only. Mama's Liquor and Lounge across the street, they're cash only. The barber shop I get my hair cut, Anna's Barbers, she's cash only. Uh, Black Dice, they're cash only. There's a lot, in this community, there are a lot of cash only places. And for some, cash equates to a more equal society. We can think about this in terms of older users who don't want to use new technology. We can think about this in terms of unhoused people who may not have bank accounts, for whom access to digital commerce may be very difficult. It's also about privacy and concerns that digital purchases can be tracked. And it's not just about buying things. There's another reason Canadians can't quite kick cash. The other way that we use cash is as a store of value to save money. Cash transactions are declining, but we're increasingly using it as a method to save. Josh Nye is a senior economist at RBC in Toronto. His recent report found Canadians were stashing cash during the pandemic. At the onset of the pandemic, people started hoarding cash, some certain types of cash specifically more than others. Tell me about that phenomenon. Think back to um, you know, the Y2K bug um, toward the end of, uh, of the last century. During the global financial crisis, particularly in the US where there were greater concerns about the solvency of banks, you know, people were withdrawing cash uh, ahead of that. And of course, during the pandemic in the early stages in 2020, we saw a real spike in, in cash withdrawals in, in demand for currency. And turning to banknotes during tumultuous times, perceived or real, offers a sense of security. And it turns out the amount of cash in circulation is at a 60-year high. Especially larger banknotes like 50s and 100s. It protects against things like, you know, cyber vulnerabilities, potential power outages, telecom outages. Like we saw this summer, you know, there's some, some safety that's afforded by, um, by having, you know, access to physical, physical cash. Global News discovered as a result of the Rogers outage in July, there was a spike in cash withdrawals. Do you think Canada could ever truly become cashless? I think we're still a, a long way from that. Again, I would point to this survey evidence that, you know, the vast majority of Canadians have, have no plans of going cashless. And with the future going contactless, some experts say new options are emerging, including micropayment services, cryptocurrencies, or even central bank digital currencies, which our central bank is studying. So as we move toward a more digital and convenient future, physical cash has not lost its appeal, but its role is still unknown in an increasingly cashless world. People focus on big flashy changes, but this is one of those cases where I really do think that it's about saying, let's have this debate and this discussion. It is an ethical question. It is a social question.